All right, everybody. Happy Tuesday and welcome to our weekly call. Uh, met all of you. We've talked um, starting the new year. We've got some uh, new faces and the team from all over is getting together. So uh, welcome. It's uh, it's always exciting to be with you guys and really look forward to carrying this through uh, in 2021 just to provide a bit of a reprieve in the middle of a busy week. I know you all have plenty going on. So as I've told everyone I've spoken to on a private call, one of the things that I always hated when I was in sales is mandatory meetings because majority of the time they're not effective, they're not efficient. And so if this ever becomes that, uh, I give you guys the, the freedom and the right to let me know it because I do not want to do anything that in any way prohibits you from growing and from being successful. And uh, mandatory meetings for the sake of mandatory meetings are not something we want to do. Uh, however, what we do want to do and provide is continual encouragement, uh, kind of unpacking some ideas, uh, maybe roundtabling some, some challenges that you guys face, and really stepping into uh, providing a resource for those of you who are in sales specifically in these private um, type or amenitized communities. And so that's something that many of you know I did for a number of years, and uh, that's what Red Earth is about, and uh, that's who we are. And so we want to continue to be the leading voice in that um, arena and industry. And you guys, we want to equip you to be um, very successful and excellent in everything you do. So that being said, I wanted to kick off, you know, where uh, this call is being recorded on the 19th of January, 2021. And the new year is always an interesting time. You know, over the past few weeks, we've spent our time discussing everything from, you know, goal setting and picking a, a word for the year to kind of help focus our time and energy. Uh, we've talked about uh, daily activity, best practices, just a number of different things. Of course, that's all on the YouTube channel if you've missed it. But I wanted to focus today on the concept of uh, momentum. So I'm going to jump in here in a minute on momentum. But before I do that, I want to address a question that came up in some of the one-to-one -one conversations this week as a way to uh, speak to an issue that I think many of you may face or may struggle with. So one of the sales uh, individuals at a community had reached out and they had a client that they were working with pretty closely. And a question came up to which the answer was not quite clear. And in that moment, uh, the particular salesperson wanted to um, provide the information uh, that the client, the customer was asking about. And yet when they called the builder um, and even people on the builder's team, there seemed to be some conflicting issues. And so in that moment, they, they kind of handed off the client to the builder and um, it just didn't go well. Right. And they were asking, you know, what's a better way to handle this? And so I just wanted to use that as a real example of something someone on the team has faced. And I'm sure many of you have before. Um, and this is in no way, shape or form a, um, a, a slight to the builders at all. Uh, but it's just a reminder as salespeople, as individuals who are uh, on the same side of the table as the customer, um, always be their advocate. And anytime you hand them off to an outside uh, source for conversation, you're really opening the door for a number of challenges to occur. It's not to say you can't do it. I just want to encourage you guys that when you uh, are faced with questions that are beyond maybe your understanding, try to be proactive and go ahead and find the right answer to that question, validate the answer to that question, and then be the one that presents it to the customer. Um, because it, it creates a level of ownership in the relationship as the professional in the situation, and you are on their side of the table discussing with the developer or discussing with the builder rather than passing them off to an outside force that may have the opportunity to contradict the way that you do business, uh, maybe say some things they shouldn't say. And, and the reality is, is that salespeople are salespeople for a reason and builders are builders for a reason and developers are developers for a reason. And so in this intricate environment of new home construction and uh, developmental uh, sales, 
I know there's a lot of questions that come up. And so this probably goes without saying, but it did happen to someone within one of the teams and they ended up losing a sale because they just could not get back what they had handed away. And so, um, you know, if you have a situation where there's a question that needs to be answered, um, do your best to be diligent to be the one who provides the answer and communicates it clearly to the customer. Because if you get into the business of allowing someone else to communicate on your behalf, you begin to lose control in that relationship and therefore authority in that relationship. And so that came up and I just thought it was a helpful little nugget to kick off today's call with. Um, as you're navigating your relationships with these clients and customers, make sure you take charge of that relationship. And if you're going to hand it off, make sure what's going to be communicated is going to be very clear. I remember one time when I was in insurance sales, <laughs> I was young in sales and I had a customer who was giving me a hard time about committing to a life insurance policy. And so I asked one of my direct reports um, what he would do. And I have no idea why he did this, but he replied all to an email um, and... <laughs> And it was a mess because uh, he, he just he, he, he didn't communicate it clearly at all. Needless to say, that customer did not stick around and did not buy insurance from me uh, anymore. But, but just be mindful when you're navigating these relationships because you can get off uh, track very quickly. So fair enough. Uh, I hope that makes, makes sense for everybody who is uh, on the call today. Uh, so uh, the concept that I want to deal with in today's, um, in today's chat is going to be uh, momentum. Okay. So here we are, new year, 2021, coming out of the gates. As talked with most of you, uh, the energy is up right now. There's a lot of activity at uh, the various communities and, and there's just a lot of things happening. Uh, one of the interesting things when you think about momentum is, you know, how do you begin to create momentum and how do you maintain momentum? So regardless if you're in a spot where there is activity or you're feeling a little bit sluggish, we're going to deal with both of those today. So as a salesperson, the concept of momentum is very, very important. A uh, little physics lesson uh, going back to school a bit. Inertia is the idea that an object that is in motion will stay in motion unless it is acted upon by an outside force. Okay? That means gravity uh, you know, is going to stop something uh, or bring it down. It's going to act upon it. Or, you know, you're, if you shoot a bullet into water, right, the density of the water is going to cause the bullet to slow. So inertia is a naturally occurring physical thing in, in our universe. And it is very true of us as salespeople as well, is there are outside forces that can affect your forward movement and progress. But by the same token, if something is still and not moving, it is going to stay still and not moving unless it is acted upon by an outside force. That's why if you have a train that's sitting on the train tracks, it's, it takes massive amounts of energy to get that train moving. But once the train is moving, it takes a massive amount of external forces to slow that train down. Okay, so I'm not trying to be like uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, but I'm, I'm telling you guys that inertia, the idea of inertia applies to your salesmanship and how you are engaging the beginning of the year. Meaning, if it's slow right now and there's not a whole lot going on, you need an external force to get your momentum up. By the flip token of that is if you're moving forward, if you've got some uh, good things happening, be aware that you have to maintain a certain level of energy in order for that momentum to stay uh, up and, and moving. And so regardless of what side of the table you find yourself on, whether things are slow or whether things are moving, understand that you have to be active in both of those arenas. And so right now, in, in a lot of my conversations when I'm dealing with different salespeople or sales teams, I find a lot of people are trying to get momentum. They're trying to get started. They're saying, you know, 2020 was a difficult year, all the different kind of stuff, right? You may be in that boat, you may not be. The point is there are two factors, I think, that can build 
and create and keep momentum. And there are two specific things that can kill momentum. And so I want to talk about each of those and and remind you guys that as you're processing through your daily activity and all the demands that you have, you can't lose focus on this stuff because it'll creep up on you, not even knowing it. And then it'll take a lot of energy to kind of get the train moving again. So the two things that affect momentum in a positive way are action and enthusiasm. If you feel stuck, if you feel stagnant, create massive action in your daily activity and create massive enthusiasm in how you begin to navigate your conversations, what you allow into uh, your life, into your mind, and so forth. So, for example, if, if you are um, struggling with momentum, struggling to get going, I would say take your five, your top five property owners that you have a relationship with and uh, contact them and get your uh, energy levels up. People who love the community, people who are great to deal with, not the property owner that's going to complain and give you a hard time about something, but get back in front of people and communicate with people who believe in the product that you are selling because they've already purchased it. You know, I remember one of the things when I was, um, kind of when I was in, in the insurance world, you know, it helped a great deal to hear the positive feedback from customers who had already bought what we were selling and they were a big fan of what we're doing. And so if you're kind of feeling like you're in the doldrums or you're getting stuck or whatever, go put yourself in front of people who believe in what it is that you're selling and are going to be an encouragement to you. Um, That's one simple action you can take. Uh, Another action you can take is just go make uh, phone calls. Uh, Just call, follow up with old appointments. Uh, Take some time to straighten up your office. Um, Just whatever it is. You know, as a writer, as a guy who's written a book, um, one of the things that people always talk about is writer's block. Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to write. Well, write about writer's block. If you, if you begin writing about writer's block, you, you actually stimulate your, your mind and your energy. And so uh, this is where for you guys, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling stagnant, start taking massive action and then get around things that lift your spirits, right? Enthusiasm, encouragement, find stuff to feed your mind with, uh, relationships, etc. All right. So that is the best way to build Um, or excuse me, to get momentum going. By the flip side of that, there are things that can kill your momentum. So whether you're, you know, moving right now or whether you're stale right now, it's going to be an outside force that gets you moving or keeps you from moving. So the two things as far as momentum that are going to kill it are complaint and discouragement. Uh, Right now, there is a lot of potential discouragement going on kind of in the world around us if you look for it, right? There's a lot of uh, stress, a lot of tension, okay? There's a lot of that going on. And so I'm not saying don't be aware of the news or your surroundings or whatever, but you cannot give yourself the constant discouragement and expect your momentum to continue, because discouragement is an outside force that slows momentum. Okay. The same is true of complaint, right? Doesn't mean you can't have a bad day. Doesn't mean you can't face a difficult situation. Doesn't mean that you can't even call up a friend and walk through something you're struggling with, but giving in to a mindset of complaint is automatically going to kill any momentum that you possibly had. And so what I see a lot of times is folks who, um, it, it, it generally is relationships, right? Um, these are the Eeyore type people, as I call them. You know, if you remember Winnie the Pooh, hello, Pooh, right? Eeyore was always just oh, ba, da, ba, da, ho-hum. You have to limit your exposure to people that are going to constantly fill your mind and your life with complaint, with negative emotion, with negative energy, and that includes your customers. So if you have customers that are constantly eating up your time, 
they're demanding things of you. They're, you know, the, the, the relationship is out of whack. You've got to get back on a positive track and stop giving away your momentum to things that are going to prohibit you from, from moving forward and from growing. And so I, I knew full stop the customers in my book of business who were going to drain my time and I always limited my time with them. Now, if they called in, I would serve them, but I would be very quick to let them know, hey, I have another appointment coming up. I need to get off the phone in two minutes instead of sitting there and just staying in that cycle. Um, you know, so again, I, I don't know why this particular concept was was on my mind and heart today. Everything I do, it's not formulaic. It's very organic. But I feel like either there are many of you who are struggling to get momentum or you're wanting to keep the momentum that you have. And so think through your daily activity, your your mindset and in all of the outside forces that are potentially either keeping you moving forward or keeping you from moving forward. And I think the two things that we can all focus on to either get the momentum or keep the momentum is massive action in the direction of your goals. I've, I've talked with all of you about your daily goals, your weekly goals, your monthly goals, massive action in that direction, as well as enthusiasm. Just a, a general mindset toward, you know what, I'm it's an awesome day today. The sun is up, the sky is blue, I have breath in my lungs, I've got opportunity ahead of me. And you have to come with that level of crazy enthusiasm because as we said on last week's call, you are transferring belief and energy to your clients. And so clients want to do business with people who are generally enthusiastic, optimistic, uh, positive, helpful, etc. Not people who are filled with complaint and discouragement. So um, again, take a snapshot assessment of how you're spending the majority of your time each day, limit your exposure to complaint and discouragement, and then increase your exposure to activity and enthusiasm, and it will affect the momentum that you need or that you already have going on. And it's important to do that now because as I said, once the train gets moving, once the momentum starts happening, okay, at that point, it's really hard for it to slow down, which is why if you're on the tail end of a great be back appointment, go call somebody that you're close with because you're going to be high in encouragement, right? You're going to be high in enthusiasm. If you make a sale and you're high, go call five people, right? By the adverse effect, if you get off a negative uh, phone call uh, with someone, it's discouraging or whatever, go put yourself back in front of somebody who's going to encourage you and shift your perspective. And I, and, I, and I think if you begin to navigate your days and being very intentional about what you're allowing in and what you're not allowing in, it will affect your momentum in massive ways and keep you guys on track for a great first quarter and a great start to 2021. So that being said, um, I'm done with my thought and ideas for the day. Anybody has any questions or anything you want to discuss, uh, we'll open up the line at this time.